Hello friends, we are going to develop an eco-awareness website based on this design here. It's been developed in Adobe XD and all to the left I have highlighted all the design elements like the colors and the themes that are used here as well as the different text styles that are used in this design. So you can see it has some sections here. This is basically the landing page for an eco-awareness website. And I have already exported all of these images so that we can use them in uh, when we are designing, uh, when we are developing the website. So in contrast to our earlier website building tutorials, we are going to use an awesome CSS library called Burma. So it's good, it's good to know uh, the inner workings of how modern CSS works. But as you, if you have followed the prior videos where we have developed some websites, it's mostly repetitive and we need to worry a lot about the website being responsive and we have to design the website from small screens to large screens from the beginning. So a CSS framework will uh, provide a lot of those uh, core functionality on its own. You just need to worry about how to lay out the elements based on your design. The most important features of Burma that I've come across are it's, it's very lightweight. It's built on top of modern CSS layout. It's 100% responsive. It is free. It uses Flexbox and Grids. So, and most importantly, uh, it's very easy to theme and extend. It's very easy to learn and work with uh, Balma if you have if you have the, the basic understanding of uh, semantics of a web page. So this is the website for Balma and uh, in this starting video we'll set up a project to create this website. There are multiple ways that which we can use Burma. So if you go to the getting started page, so you'll see the documentation. This link will be very useful going forward when we are developing the websites. So they provide a number of ways in which we can use the Burma CSS library. The most easiest version is to directly use their uh, CDN to load the Palma CSS file, but it, it won't be very uh, easier to theme it. So we'll just have to use all the default layouts and colors and fonts they, that they use. So instead, what we are going to do is we are going to use uh, npm package to install the Palma package. Uh, that is this option so that we can customize this theme because we have already set up some fonts like this, font styles like this and we also have some theme colors like this. By default, Balma comes with uh, a number of colors so we can adjust them using SCSS. So let's uh, open up uh, our command prompt so i have already created uh, a folder called eco awareness it has a blank html file there's a css folder and there's an assets folder now if you are going to install palma as an npm dependency 
we will create an npm project here now here so now we have an npm project here and we will install balma with this command npm install balma So this will download the Balma package and add it to the npm project. Now it's very good to open this project in VS Code. Coming to the index.html file, I'll create a blank HTML page here and we can use We can always refer to these files for how to set up Palma. So we have this main.scss file. Let's Let me open up the terminal here. Okay. And the way we import uh, the Balma that's installed in the node packages for that is to use the sas import and going back to the design we have fonts called spartan and rubik so we'll import them also we're going to google fonts for spartan and I'm going to choose bold 700 and regular 400. We'll also look for the phone called Rubik, which is here. From here, I'll choose the regular. We can pick this here. And load the CSS files here. Going back to Palma, you can see the customize help page where it'll show us all the variables that are used by Palma internally. So by default, it'll have a primary variable. It is just pointing to turquoise. I'm going to change the primary color. So before we import Parma, we have to specify, we can override the primary color. This will be our primary color. I'll copy this. And 
there's also a primary dark variant I'll use this color as the primary dark variant and I already have uh, copied so I'll paste it with the variable name and there's also family primary or we can use family sans serif this will be our default form the default font that we're going to use will be rubik and we'll use the other font for headings so it will be called spartan I'll copy this now with this we can enable watch sas so it will create uh, it will compile this SES file into sas you can see it has generated the CSS file. So coming back to index.html. You can simply import Live server to see the website in action. So just to start off, I will create a container and a section inside it. Let's have a heading. On saving this, you can see uh, an H1 tag is created here with appropriate uh, paddings for this section. Oh, I misspelled container. So, if you have a container, it will have uh, it will take care of the responsiveness, it will have a max width and as the screen size adjusts, it will change the media queries. So that's good. And let's have a subtitle as well. Now that we have used we have overridden the primary variable what we can do is have color primary yes so this is like a semantic way of saying that this text has a primary color And each size one represents the text within with this class will have of size one and we can even reduce it to three and will automatically reduce. We'll go through most of the required things based on the documentation. So on this page, uh, 
in their documentation they have presented all the initial variables and how they're set up if we don't override any of these these will be the default values that will be taken care so now that the website uh, project is set up we'll go over the uh, build of this design in the next video so stay tuned thank you